Welcome back to Dahan on Fire, a YouTube channel and podcast featuring commentary, education, and conversation with Dr. John Dahan. Dahan on Fire is brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. In today's question, we're going to talk with Dr. Dahan about HRR, what it is, how it's calculated, and why it's important in a fire investigation. Let's ask Dr. Dahan right now. Dahan on Fire contains discussion and video not suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hello, Dr. Dahan. Here we are again with another question. Well, good day. I guess I'm ready to provide some sort of answer to your question. Well, that's excellent. Okay, Dr. Dahan, what is HRR? HRR in uh, fire science and fire engineering it represents heat release rate. And it's the fundamental property of a fire or any source of heat, actually. Um, and it's literally the power of the co combustion reaction, uh, how much heat is being produced per second. So it's joules per second, um, which is translated to wattage. So we, we, we kind of estimate uh, heat release rates uh, based on what we see burning. That's the first, you know, first thing. So we have kind of a, a menu, um, a smoldering cigarette, or even a glowing cigarette, if actually drawing on it, represents about a five watt fire. Very, very small. By comparison, a um, dinner table candle or a, a single wooden match represents about a 50 watt fire. And then it goes up from there. A, an office uh, wastebasket uh, with crumpled paper, um, and it represents about 150 kilowatts. We're a thousand watt units now. So it, it represents a more significant potential ignition. The larger the heat release rate, the faster um, the combustion is occurring, the faster you're filling the room with um, the waste products, the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide and water vapor. And um, the bigger the, the, the fire in terms of heat release rate, the, the more risk there is to materials, fuels in the room. Uh, so for very small fires under 100, 150 kilowatts or thereabouts, you have to have a, a suitable target pretty close in preferably above the flames uh, to maximize the amount of heat that it's absorbing. Uh, the larger the fire, the more significant radiant heat transmission becomes. And you get something on the order of four or 500 kilowatts, uh, the average um, upholstered chair, for instance, with synthetic fabric and urethane foam is about a 500 kilowatt fire. So the flames are probably a meter tall, something like that. Uh, and uh, now radiant heat becomes the most significant threat to nearby surfaces. And you can damage them at some distance and run the risk of ignition if the, if the expression or the uh, exposure continues. And so it's a, really, it's a really critical feature to appreciate about a fire or any heat producing source. Um, because, um, because in, fin in fact, you can't use temperature because almost all uh, materials burning in open air and under normal atmospheric conditions uh, produce about the same temperature range, you know, 800, 900 C uh, in terms of uh, the flame temperature, maximum flame temperature. Even a candle flame has a very thin layer uh, where the con conditions are, are just right, and that can exceed 1,200 uh, C. Yeah, but it's, it's still a very weak source, uh, and as a result, you have to have something almost in contact with a candle flame or just over it to maximize the, maximize the heat transmission or, you know, to that target. Now, is there any way to calculate heat release rate in the field? No, not really. In the, in the laboratory, we have what's called a, a calorimeter, where we, actually, um, <clears throat> where we actually draw up the waste products and 
uh, measure the oxygen and carbon dioxide content and carbon monoxide content of the of the gases being produced by the combustion. And by calculating how much oxygen is being consumed per um, per second, you can actually uh, actually calculate how much energy you're producing, how many joules of energy you're producing in that second. Um, and we can do that even in large scale. You know, I've done tests under um, the cone, uh, sorry, the calorimeter hood uh, that are 12 meters across, and you can burn an entire room underneath them. Uh, most of them are considerably smaller. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's basically almost like a kitchen uh, uh, exhaust vent uh, over your stove. Uh, now there's a, or in the last 20 years or so, uh, there is what's called a cone calorimeter, and they, they basically reduced the scale of, of the test so that the test material is about a 15 um, centimeter square, uh, and um, you ignite it uh, by radiant heat, and uh, there's a very small uh, hood inside, and that dries, draws up all of the combustion products, and it has the same sensors to calculate oxygen uh, consumption and things like that. So technically, it's an oxygen consumption calorimeter that works in most of these things. Um, but the cone calorimeter allows you to test very small um, samples of material and get uh, very realistic uh, uh, results. So it's very important to document the scene so that later on you can reconstruct it or look at everything that was present in the fuel load and then go to these controlled burns and test and then you can calculate a heat release rate then. Yes, that's right. That's why documentation of a, of a fire scene is so important because if I know, uh, for instance, in this room right now, uh, the walls are covered with thin uh, ply paneling and that will uh, re uh, result in, once the room uh, gets fully involved, that represents a huge fuel load because of the thin uh, material and the large surface area involved. So fire investigators today are cautioned to survey the room and establish however they can what the wall coverings, the floor coverings, and even the ceiling coverings are present, preferably taking samples in case there's any question about what those materials are, and particularly if they're combustible, like, like uh, plywood paneling uh, or acrylic uh, floor coverings and things like that. Um, you can get a feel for, you know, if you have a armchair, as I said earlier, uh, modern upholstery, uh, synthetic materials and things like that, it's probably going to be a four or 500 kilowatt fire. A recliner can be as high as uh, one megawatt. A six foot tall dry scotch pine Christmas tree is about three megawatts. And by comparison, if you pour a gallon of um, American gallon of gasoline out on a concrete floor, you get about a one to one and a half megawatt fire out of it. So, you know, if you walk into a room that's burned a month after Christmas and it looks like it's been firebombed, essentially it has been because that tree has produced the equivalent heat release rate in about the same duration, about a minute or two. Uh, that uh, would uh, would result from a gallon of gasoline poured on a on a bare floor. Uh, so yes, by by documenting what's present uh, and uh, keeping an eye on those, you can estimate how big the fire might have been. Uh, looking at burn patterns, there's a direct relationship between the heat release rate and the height of the flame. So if you have something that for instance, a, a, a combustible ceiling that has no thermal damage to it, you know that the fire in that room uh, never got, the flames from that fire never got uh, more than a meter or so tall uh, because the gases as they cool uh, and rise away from, they rise and then cool um, as they rise away from the, uh, the actual fire, by the time they get to two and a half meters, uh, they're going to be suitably cool that they're not going to have a material effect. 
and and you can you know turn that on its head. Well, I have a, a an actual physical burn pattern on the ceiling. I know I've had something of you know one or two megawatts uh, fire burning somewhere in the in in a single fuel package to create that damage. Okay, so heat release rate, another important factor to consider in your investigation. Yes, because the the uh, heat release rate will also control uh, whether that room goes to flashover, full room involvement. And so by assessing the product that you can identify uh, or combustible products that you can identify, you realize that uh, I, I could have had a big enough fire in here to bring the entire room to flash over and then everything combustible in that room is on fire and is producing uh, heat and flame as fast as oxygen can get into it. Okay, well, thank you for that answer and uh, we'll be back soon with another question, I'm sure. Great, we'll try to be ready. Thanks for watching. Have you subscribed yet? Please do so. You'll get notifications of new videos and things happening here on the channel. Remember to ring the bell to get notifications and don't forget to set your devices so you receive those notifications. Until next time, for Dahan on Fire and Firewise Learning Academy, I'm Tim Davis.